this is Daniel Weinerman, and welcome to my presentation on wildlife conservation. Wildlife includes ecosystems, and in ecosystems, there is the food chain and natural resources. We'll take a look at what happens to these when they are disrupted. Let's start with the food chain. The food chain is made up of many different things, and it's the circle of life. It all starts with the producers. Producers can make their own food through photosynthesis. Primary consumers eat the producers. They can be bugs or animals. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. They can be larger animals. Tertiary consumers, even larger animals that eat secondary consumers. Decomposers are microorganisms that eat dead consumers. It all starts with the producers. Producers make their own food through photosynthesis. It is any the producers are anything that makes their own food. Then primary consumers. They are smaller animals or any herbivore that eats the producer. Then secondary consumers eat the primary consumers, slightly larger animals like a frog for a grasshopper. Then tertiary consumers are the largest. They eat the secondary consumers. Or if they want a light snack, they can have the primary consumers. And then when anything dies, if it's ter either a tertiary, a producer, a primary consumer, or a secondary consumer, then these guys come in. The decomposers. They decompose the dead tissue of tertiary, secondary, primary, even the producers. And then when that is when they, uh, when they decompose it, it turns into soil and sprouts the producers. And that is the circle of life. Just like the food chain, if natural resources are disturbed, it can have negative effects on the wildlife living in that area. For example, oftentimes forests are cut down for lumber or development of the land. However, this can have a negative effect on the animals living in that area. Let's look at one such animal, the proboscic monkey. The proboscic monk there are less than 7000 proboscic monkeys left in the world because their habitat is being destroyed. They are exclusively found in the coastal rainforest of Borneo Island. They live in higher levels of the cant forest canopy. Unlike other endangered animals, such as the American bison, eagle, and Californian condor, which have increased their number by thriving in an, a safe environment, the proboscic monkey does not adapt well to living in captivity in an artificial environment. Because of their diet, they cannot be relocated to any other form. The diet of the proboscic monkey is mostly made up of leaves from the surrounding trees and overripe fruit. <clears throat> the fruit must be overripe because they have very sensitive stomachs that cannot digest ripe fruit. Because of this special diet, they cannot be relocated to any other forest. So what can we do? We probably can't do much for the proboscic monkey since they live in Borneo. However, we can take care of the natural resources around us. We can follow the leave no trace principles, which are know before you go, choose the right path, trash your trash, leave what you find, be careful with fire, respect wildlife, be kind to other visitors. We can also follow the outdoor code. As an American, I will do my best to be clean with my outdoor manners, be careful with fire, be considerate in the outdoors, be conservation-minded. If we all do our part, we can enjoy the outdoors for generations to come. It's up to you.